So in this section, I'm going to talk about parameterization and I'm going to deal with it in, in a way that replicates these parameters that we usually see in function nodes. Shift is not that common, but frequency, amplitude and phase are very common. And I'm going to equate these to making a geometric transformation of the input and of the output of the function that we're dealing with. So if, you, if I transform the value before, yeah, it's going to be very different than if I transform the value afterwards. And so here you can see a, a correspondence between uh, the, the inputs and the type of operation that goes on. Of course, you know, there's more ways to you know, transform the values and parameterize things, but this is a simple way and I think it's worth to look at. So I have here the sine function and I'm using this wrap node to apply it to the, uh, to the values in this instancer points object again, where I can graph things. And you can see that this is what it looks like. But if I actually connect here the sine node, you see it looks very different. This is because this function node was uh, made to fit the function between a zero and one. So you have this, um, you have this square, right? And the function fits right in there. But so this goes from zero to one, from zero to one. But the, the sine function usually actually goes from zero to two pi. So it has the cycle from zero to two pi and I put values from minus one to one. So it's, it's quite different from from this, um, you know, this rescale. So it, it was it was fit into um, a unit space, and basically I'm going to remap it again. So it looks like the uh, you know, the usual function. So remap. I plug the function here, and sorry here, and this is the values that I'm going to transform, and I'm going to call pi node by is tools because it has all these different options. And I'm going to put from zero to two pi. It's going to output minus one to one. Okay, so with this, it looks just as the as the node itself. So they both look the same. So with this, I can evaluate these parameters. So frequency, if I put this to two, you see that all right, I have more waves, more cycles in the same space. Now, an issue with function nodes, especially the native ones, is that the frequency cannot be put to values below one. So if I put one or 0.5, you'll see that it does the same thing. So this is a bit annoying because I would expect, you know, to have the this wave elongated, but that doesn't happen. So the amplitude controls um, the, you know, the, the scale on the outputs. But as you can see, it it is clamped. So even if I change this here to clamp high at two, it doesn't matter. So this clamp parameter in many functions, it only works inside the unit space. So if I put 0.5, yes, I'll see a change in the clamp. But other than that, you know, it's not going to do anything for me. So there's this problem with amplitude. And then we have uh, we have phase, which allows me to shift, uh, basically shift the output, which is all good. Now, let me try to do these types of parameters for this uh, sign node. So the way I show I show in here, it's basically, I transform the input, and I get frequency and phase, I transform the output, and I get amplitude and shift. So let's just do that. I'm going to put here this transform 1D node and this transform 1D node. So I'm going to transform the input and I'm going to transform the output. And to control these, uh, instead of creating constant scalar nodes, I'm going to link it to this object A. So I'm going to link the input transformations to the X coordinate. So position X will go into translate and the scale X will go into scale of the input and uh, position Y will go into translate and scale Y will go into scale of the output. So this way, when I have this object here, this object A, I can just, you know, move up, scale up and down and I change the amplitude with well, when I move, I, I do a shift. When I uh, scale on the x axis, I do a frequency. And here you can see that I can go to values below one. So if I put 0.5, you know, now I get my my wave cycle elongated. Of course, if I put two, I get more waves. You know, I get um, smaller cycles. But now it it works. Unlike, for example, you know, the, here in the function node. Uh, so. I can also change the phase by moving the object. So it will give me the same thing. So if I move, say, uh, let's see, I move 1.3, you know, it will give me the same thing as if I come here and I connect this one and I do phase 1.3, I hope. Let's see. 
Yeah, it gives me the same result, same exact result. So these parameters are doing the same exact thing as these parameters in here. Now, this is a way you can, you know, you can replace the sign with other functions and see what you get. Uh, but basically, it's a way to transform the values and basically say, okay, before you do this, uh, this function here, and you pass the values through this function, let me just readjust the values or after the function, let me just, you know, change uh, their their scope. So one thing that you probably notice is that it's a bit counterintuitive with phase and frequency. You know, as I move this object on the x axis, the curve actually seems to go backwards. And as I scale this up, you know, it seems that the curve actually compresses. So it's it seems a bit unintuitive. And let's let's go back, let's go to into another example and then we come back here to this. So let's say that I want to do a, um, a wipe. Say that I have, for example, here this remap node and I want to transform, let's see, I want to have a transition that goes from zero to one, zero to one, okay. And say that, okay, you know, like in After Effects or uh, other video applications you want, I have this transition, I have something that has a transition, an effect, something that is being affected by, you know, by this little gradient, and I want to wipe it, I want to make it go across the screen. So again, I could put, you know, uh, a transform 1D, node and I will transform the input and well yeah actually before I transform the input you probably would think well if I want to change if I want to change my input range why not just you know add to the input range come here and say scalar add put in into the input and uh, do another one in which this has a base value of one put it here and then have a scalar node and say okay uh, why not just you know add to that and then you can do a wipe you know this this way i can see this transition wiping from one uh, one side to the other why not uh, why not do that and the issue with this is that not only you don't always have access to the to the input range so in this case of the remap it's quite simple it's just two ports let's say i have a gradient right in which I can have multiple keys. So do I have to do, uh, you know, put an add node for each key of, of the gradient? Well, that's not very handy. What about if I have a curve node, right? I don't even have access to, to the keys position. From outside, I can only change those here in the curve editor. So it's, it's not very uh, reasonable to expect me to be able to add an offset to all of the keys. Let me put this into one, one. And this here. Okay. So if I have these keys, for example, and I'm gonna pass this, say pass here. And so, okay, I have this transition. How can I, uh, for example, uh, how can I uh, wipe it? How can I make it go from, uh, you know, from one side to the other? I don't have access to the keys. I cannot come here, you know, even though I can animate the uh, the positions here. Imagine me having to animate all of these keys. Wouldn't, wouldn't be very interesting. So another way to go about it, instead of trying to uh, animate the, the input range markers or keys, you can manipulate the input. So let's, let's do that. So I'm going to come here and put transform 1D and again, do the same thing with object A for, you know, for easier interaction. And I'm going to put AX on the translate and scale X on the scale. Okay. So again, just like the, the function, you see that when I move this forward, the, um, you know, the, the graph seems to go backwards. And when I scale this up, you know, it actually looks like it shrinks. And when I scale A down, you see that the graph scales up. So it's a bit counterintuitive. And basically, you can see that whatever I'm doing, uh, it's doing the reverse. What's happening here is that it, so instead of animating the markers, let's consider these A and B has, you know, my, my the range I'm selecting. Instead of animating the range selectors, I'm animating the, the input. It's like I'm animating the, the number line itself. If I come here and select these, uh, these objects and these numbers. Okay, so if if I scale this, so now B is on two. But what what happens if I scale the number line and the grid up by two? Well, maybe I, I would you know I would expect to have you know B to go to four, but that's not what happens. Now B goes to one. 
or what happens if I move both of them by one unit? Maybe I would expect now B to catch three and A to catch one, but that does not, it's not what happens. It actually goes backwards because now the number line moved, but the markers are in the same place. So this is what uh, will happen with this type of thing is that it will actually do the inverse operation. So to do, um, to operate with this, to deal with this in a more uh, reasonable way, actually you can perform the inverse transformation. So here is, a compound that basically does the same transformation as this but the inverse transformation so with this i can for example plug it in here and do the same thing so the value that i want to transform ax into translate uh, scale of x into scale and the result in here so now when i move this object a you see that it goes along as i you know intuitively expect and if i scale a up it's going to scale the graph up okay so this works much you know it, it seems much more reasonable uh, so i can also change the center here with the transform 1d i have this center parameter in which i can basically scale uh the um the input marker so i can say the center center of scale i want it to be at 0.5 so when i scale now it will scale from zero right it will scale from here but what if i want to set to scale it from the middle of the of the curve so if i put here 0.5 it can be another value depending on your curve now when i scale it will scale from the center of the curve so if you have say uh, if, you, if you have like this in this remap node if you have those two markers at zero and one you can actually scale from the center of the transition or if you want in this case if i can if i put here one i can scale from the end of the transition so it depends on what you want but it's a much more i know rational way to interact with this and get something that you expect so going back even to this um, parameterization of the sine function instead of using something uh, that mimics the function nodes uh, in this case the frequency and phase i can instead use the inverse operation and having it uh, you know work the way i think it's more intuitive so if i put this here so now when i move this uh, this object you see that the wave sine wave goes forward with it if i scale this on the x-axis you see that the waves become you know bigger or smaller etc so it depends on what you're trying to do so in the first case where i used just the uh, the usual transform compound it works just like the node works the, the function node works but if i want an interaction that is a bit more intuitive maybe i want to use the on the input transformation the inverse operation the output has no issues with uh, you know you don't need to use the inverse operation so this concludes this part about mapping it's a bit extens but it also takes a lot of things out of the way um, um, maybe sometimes when I explain these things, it seems a bit scary. Of course, you don't have to know all these things beforehand. The good thing about notes is that you can make a lot of mistakes, you know, really fast. And, you know, if something doesn't work, you just try something else until you get what you want. So I try to explain them here, you know, like like I know everything uh, beforehand, but that's not true. Uh, I, I just do that because, you know, I want to explain things in a minimum time possible and in a very concentrated way. But so don't you don't have to know all of these things uh you know from the top of your head but it's nice to have a notion and even if you there's something uh down the line that you remember oh yeah i remember seeing something about this so that's that's probably more important uh to focus on that than you know trying to know everything beforehand so see you in integers cheers